with thyroid cancer, there's four kinds, ranging to the one where it's a death sentence. I actually was teaching because I do a lot of resident teaching and I was in the simulation lab and I knew that morning that they were probably gonna pop up, it was 48 hours later. And I got a call from my husband. I was like, oh, he must have gotten the results and he wouldn't call me during sim lab if this was cancer, so it must be good. So I picked it up and he says, it's cancer. And I just walked out of sim lab. I just left all the residents there. I was like, all right, see ya. Very much into family life. I have two young daughters, age five and eight, and a husband who's a physician as well. Um, although I am a you know, full-time working physician, my work time is my work time, and then when we're together, it's all together. Spending time with my family is very special to me. It came back that it was papillary well-differentiated cancer, which is the best prognosis for thyroid. January 17th, 2011, I quickly you know, had a central neck dissection and a total thyroidectomy, which is a pretty big procedure and left me with a lot of pain. They go in there, they scoop everything out, but there's always a chance there's microscopic cells left and you don't want that. So with cancer treatment, it's chemotherapy, you know, IV stuff or radiation, but thyroid cancer is unique that you get treated with radioactive iodine. So when the radioactive iodine pill comes, it's like a big to-do. It comes in this crazy metal container and they bring it in on a little stretcher and you're sitting there like, okay, everyone else is afraid to get touch, be near this medicine and I've got to put this medicine in my body. So I'm nuclear, right? I'm like literally radioactive. So if you're near me, you be getting radioactivated, which isn't ideal for anyone, but when you're trying to kill your cancer, it's sort of what you have to do. Thyroid gland normally takes up iodine and turns it into thyroid hormone. Uh, because of that, radioactive iodine is a very effective treatment for thyroid cancer because you give the patient some iodine that normally goes to any thyroid tissue anywhere in the body. If you have some radioactivity attached to it, it will kill that thyroid tissue. However, there's one other tissue in the body that takes up iodine, and that's the salivary glands. Eight months after the thyroidectomy, I started having some pain in my face and just sort of ignored it, but then noticed, quickly noticed a pattern that every time I was eating, I was having pain and then eventually swelling on both sides of my face. I've got a pretty good pain threshold, but uh, it's something when it's on your face and it's every time that you want to eat, sort of hard to ignore, um, you know, mixing pain with pleasure. Patients who get higher doses of radioiodine are very susceptible to having long-term dysfunction of their saliva glands. And this can cause significant uh, reduction in their salivary gland function, long-term dry mouth, problems with speech and swallowing, and reduction in their quality of life. They told me that I would, you know, that the salivary gland is the issue, that nobody really drove home the point that, hey, you know, you might actually get this complication. You might actually not only get it, but you're gonna need a procedure for it. So I really don't feel like that was driven home. Obviously I didn't have a choice, you know, it was necessary to go ahead and kill all my thyroid cells, but it would have been nice to know. Until the uh, development of salivary endoscopy, there was very little that we could do for um, thyroid cancer patients who were having swelling in their saliva glands. Other than really doing nothing, and in extreme cases we would offer uh, actual another surgery to remove their salivary glands. And these are people who had just undergone cancer surgery of their thyroid, so that was very discouraging. Uh, sal endoscopy has been a, a wonderful development because it's allowed us to be a little more aggressive than just supportive care, but not quite as aggressive as removal of the gland. The overall procedure was a fantastic experience. That being said, um, Dr. Gillespie told me after the fact, because of the damage that my ducts had had from the radioactive iodine, there would be a chance I'd have to go back to the operating room in the future. But that doesn't worry me because I know that he exists. He's a specialist. I know that the tool, the instrument exists. And it was such a quick and painless experience that I feel like if I had to get it done in the future, then I'd be okay with that. <laughs>